Oz has something that he wanted to talk about. He he in the notes, all he has is Oz has a hot take. So I don't have an intro for this. Um, Oz is going to give us a hot take of something. Uh, can I can I do the can I do the intro for Oz's hot takes? Sure, yeah, oh, do oh. it. Okay. And now we have a hot take from Oz in the segment we're calling Oz's hot takes. <laughs> take it right. away, Oz. Oh, that's good. Hot, take it away, Oz. <laughs> oh, God. Actually, no, you know what? No, I do like it. I just, like my, my first yeah. instinct was to cringe. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's funny, but it's fun. It's fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, so my, my hot take, um, and I don't know, I don't think it should be considered a hot, take, a hot take, but um, I, I'm, I'm calling for us to, and us by mean, like anybody who hears this, is to consider stop playing campaign RPGs in favor of one shots bring one shots to the table and my my reasoning for this is i feel that there's several advantages to this i feel like we're doing this backwards uh the the traditional thought process right of getting an rpg group together has always been all right we're gonna gather people right whoever is interested in committing to x amount of sessions or even into just the unforeseeable future until it ends whenever we feel like it's properly ended and and just to commit build characters in very complex systems and very thick rule books expensive rule books uh you know buy a bunch of components for games you don't even know if you're going to particularly like in groups that you're particularly possibly not going to get along with in play styles that you might not actually like and people start feeling locked into these groups and and guilty when they're like guys i don't think that this is for me i want to walk or and and then just kind of throws the campaign possibly for a complete loop right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it just started hitting me recently that we have so many games that don't get played and mind you i'm not saying that you can't that you can't play dnd &D as a one shot or shadow run is a one shot or sure. like super complicated games that way but bring pre-gens for those games and be like hey we're playing this and if somebody already knows those rules great but i don't understand why we have the one person who has to take it upon themselves to learn a 500 page rule book and start building this comprehensive setting and and world and plot line for uh an indefinite period only to find out that you know they can't even bring it to the table because they can't get the commitment or, you know, like they brought it to the table once and then nobody was interested in continuing when what we could be doing is what the board game community does, where they could just literally bust out a game. The rule book is like 15 pages at most, right? They bust out a mm -hmm. game, play it casually end for the night, go home. And then they think about, did I enjoy playing with this person? Would I invite them back to my game night? Did, do I feel like they're a good fit for me? How did I feel about how they played with each other, right? And then as you start building your groups together, right, who you feel comfortable with. And also, maybe that game style was not for you. That game, whatever the mechanics were there, and then you can have a conversation about it. Literally be like, I didn't really like this. Maybe we could look into a game that does something else. So yeah. you can swap to a different system. A new, just a new system, a new game, something else, right? And you get to play that mm -hmm. and you get to experiment. And then finally, uh, GMs, the GM role can actually be traded around, right? Because one person might be interested in a setting that someone else isn't, right? And you don't have to have that one person that's always the forever GM. Because especially, and, and here's the thing about one shot rpgs they tend to be a little more collaborative in nature they tend to be a little mm. where the gm doesn't have so much power in deciding there's plenty of collaborative storytelling games and so where the gm role is disseminated amongst everybody where everyone you know um i've i've been reading you know fiasco i know is one that we're all familiar with um here at the shadowcasters network but i've been reading mm. stuff like dream askew i've been reading you know bluebeard's bride is has a gm but um it, it's it has like this very give and take kind of story, improvisational storytelling style where you could just bust it out at the table and go and there doesn't have to be prep time. So GMs can change. You can swap players around. There's no commitment. And then finally, if you all choose to embark on like and if I have to like find the 
the the analog right to the board game side right the legacy style board game of an rpg campaign then you go for it and hope it makes it right but like why it just feels like we're we are we're jumping into like a commitment and yeah. like if i had to do the relationship analog right like we're just jumping into a big polycule marriage right and like hoping <laughs> that this works out and it's like i don't know i feel like you need to shop around some and and then really right. figure out you know what it is that you like about rpgs if at all that's another thing, yeah right so what do you I... all think I think that you make some really excellent points about so so one of the things about RPGs uh tabletop RPGs I think um the reason like bear with me because I'm I'm kind of thinking about this for the first time as you say you know like I hadn't really thought about this before but uh what but but tabletop RPGs suffer from the fact that that they started with um, big sprawling games like D and D and and you know Shadowrun and 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 big games that were intended to be played in campaign styles and stuff like that. Whereas board games were never like that. Mm -hmm. um, I think the comparison to board games is excellent. Uh, the board game that group that I used to have, I don't need more, but but the board game group I used to have, what we would do is we would rotate and take turns, and every week one of us um, would say, "This is the game we're playing." Like, I want to play this game, so we're going to play this game. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, everyone had agreed ahead of time that it didn't matter if it's a kind of game that you like or don't like. You know, we, we would consider that, of course, but it was an opportunity for us to all get to try different things and also to get to play the games that we're excited about as individuals and, um, and whatnot. And why not do that like with RPGs? My, uh, on my current group that I game with i think unwittingly did exactly what you're saying oz funny uh, funnily we're playing D, &D right now um <laughs> but we didn't start there we started with um some other games uh one shots and or small campaign arcs uh of a couple of sessions and we we played several different games until one day one of us was like are you guys you guys want to i know this isn't exactly what we've been doing but are any of you guys actually interested in D and I haven't played that in a long time. And we were like, yeah, I kind of would like to scratch that itch too. And, um, but because we had played all these other kinds of games and kind of understood each other, we kind of were able to come into it with both eyes open. Like, like, and just be like, like, mm -hmm. yeah, like, <laughs> like there was a lot of a uh, consent, so to speak. Like, yeah. like we were like, we are all OK with this. Let's just all play D&D because &D, we all want to um, mm -hmm. <laughs> instead mm -hmm. of we have to, which is, I think, kind of what you're saying. Like, like when you start with D&D &D and you invest in so and so is learning the rules, you're spending all this time building and developing a character. We're going to spend, you know, the first three sessions getting to level one and two, you know, like, mm -hmm. and then, um, and then we've, you've invested so much time and there's like a sunk cost fallacy that happens there where you're like, well, we've been playing for this long and we're kind of just getting into it. We kind of have to keep playing now. And so-and-so bought all the books and, and <laughs> all mm -hmm. this kind of stuff. I, I, anyway, that's my long winded way of saying, I think you're onto something. I think we should absolutely normalize starting in that way. If you end up playing Shadowrun or Pathfinder, um, then more power to you. But maybe, maybe the, the way people should start is with one shots. So you can just get a taste for things. Yeah. You said my least favorite word, Bobby. Yeah. You said should. Yeah, I know you've been yeah. giving me a hard time about that all night, but yeah. uh, you just deal with it, I guess. I don't yeah, yeah, really, I know. I'm, I, I'm, I'm giving you a hard time, but yeah. actually I feel about this the way I feel about awards, which is to say, I agree with you a hundred percent, unless we're talking about mine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, so in, in the RPG development space, I'm not interested in one shot. Uh, let me say this. I'm not in the, the game I'm developing right now. is not a one shot. It's, sure. it's a fully thing. And I, we want to go lots of different places for it. But I do also want to develop one shots. Um, but I think. Can I, can I stop you for a second and ask You're, and make did. sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, 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 I want to make sure that we're clarifying here when we, <clears throat> we're talking about one shots as in just playing at one time, not necessarily like one page RPGs. 
Yeah, yeah, right. I hear you. Okay, yeah. But nobody nobody is going to learn a 500-page rule book for a one-shot, though. Let's just be clear about that. No, right. Yeah. Well, I have no, a follow-up like, question to that, but I want you to continue what you yeah. were saying. So, but, but what I what I do think, though, is that these are... <laughs> so calling them both RPGs is true, and I don't want to say that that... I don't want to divide them from being RPGs, but there is a big difference in what people want out of both of those things, right? Um, for example, people who watched the Buffy the Vampire Slayer movie, and that's it, mm -hmm. versus people who took that ride with Joss Whedon and watched the Buffy the Vampire series and Angel and read the graphic novels, right? Mm -hmm. There is a big difference between those two experiences for sure you know in a, in a way that like i'll give you another example the marvel movies right wide wide broad appeal i mean literally mm -hmm. trying to appeal to every single person on the planet versus people who have been into comics weekly for years right those mm -hmm. are those are very different audiences uh i i think you are always going to have people who want that long form, you know, intensely fulfilling, uh, uh, deeply personal and interpersonal game where your character gets to evolve it. I'm not afraid of that going away, even as I say, I think I agree with you that role playing games should not be the commitment that we are sort of assuming them that they need to be. There's an interesting point that I think you make. Um, maybe not explicitly, but it makes me think of the fact that um, a par kind of part of the DNA of an RPG is developing a character over time. Um, you, you know what I mean? Like, I, mean, I know, so that's, not, you get I know that's not technically required, but 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 it's think fulfilling. about you you yeah. like it. It, it hits, if you it think about fun. RPGs as yeah. video games, part of the RPG genre and video games is you've got you you have skill you earn skill points and you yeah. develop a character or you learn new things or get new abilities mm -hmm. over time you know stories where nobody changes are boring stories frankly right, right. So stories right. where your character has a narrative or or skill or you know some kind of growth arc is there that's good storytelling but i mean then well, i feel like you're you, are you implying that that those kinds of arcs can't happen in a one shot. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is that you are going to continue. If you have a character who has unlimited buttons that you can mm -hmm. push for growth on them, there's going to be a group, somebody, there's going to be a, a group of people out there that will want their character to inhabit. That will be theirs, that they can keep pushing that button on that character over and over again. Right. That's, that's how I feel. Right. I know that there are people out there who inhabit their characters beyond I don't want this character to leave. I want to play this mm -hmm. character again. I want them to have adventures. I want them mm -hmm. to experience everything. Um, and I'm not saying to not no, do that. No, I just, of course you're not. Yeah. Because like uh, we understand you perfectly, right? Mm -hmm. But the world we live in now is that RPGs are accessible to way more people. And I don't think that just because that's the case, we need to say, okay, great. This is in the cultural zeitgeist. People can play RPGs without stigma now. Let's plan the next four years of campaigns. That's not the next logical leap. The next logical right. leap is, I think, what you're saying, which is, hey, well, why don't we dip our toe in and play kids on bikes, you know, for a week or two? Yeah. yeah. And then also it's like, oh, my God, I love this. Well, do you want to continue this or would you like to go a little bit deeper? Right. Like those are those are dances that absolutely can happen. And no longer do we have to just say, OK, cool. Here's a player's handbook. Come back to me when you've read it. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. And we have yeah. options now. Exactly. And options, I think, are such a big part of this because like the the board game community in particular i mean there it, the the games you can play are just and that people are willing to play it's very eclectic i mean when we're yeah. when you're looking at you know wingspan a board game about bird watching or yeah. Catan, <laughs> let's trade some sheep like somehow these take off and they become like you know and so I don't feel like we really give that kind of opportunity to so many awesome RPGs because the the mentality, as Bobby had mentioned, right? Like we started with big sprawling campaign games and then that's that we haven't really unstuck ourselves from that train of thought. Yeah, and we right. really should be looking at yeah. building play groups that we're going to enjoy playing together with. Yeah. 
that and we know each other's styles and what we want to put up with long term right. if yeah, we right. now Paul, palmer palmer makes a point and says he says um in the chat for me when there is an advancement i'm not going to play it more than a couple of times i think i totally understand that but i want to say and and i'm not uh, forgive me if i'm putting words in your mouth palmer um but i don't I wonder if you're saying that as a negative. I don't consider that to be a negative that you might only play it once or twice. S using the board game analogy, which I think is very apt in this discussion, mm -hmm. um, I've got more than half of the board games on my shelf I've only played one time, and I w yeah. I'm perfectly happy having bought them because it was a very enjoyable experience, and, and I might $50. play them again one day. All right, if you pay $50 for a game, and you and your friends play that three times that is more that is more of a of a communal relational experience than if you guys were to have gone to four or five movies yeah. and it was half the price yeah i uh, absolutely if somebody plays my game three times win fine great yeah. i'm fine with it yeah. i mean like yes i'd love it you know if you'd if you'd come to tournaments and 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 read all the <laughs> books and and get into the lore and come onto our forums but like hey you sure. buy my game and play it three times win good yeah yeah and i mean advancement can doesn't necessarily have to be just mechanical it can also be in in terms of just telling a story and the yeah. character's growth growth you know character uh, uh as that like personal arc can be its own type of advancement mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. i mean i but i i do understand the appeal of wanting to make your character bigger and badder than before you know yeah right these aren't these aren't um either or things no of course right? not like like i know oz that you are still going to have campaign play in your life i yeah. know <laughs> you i know you are not going to give up campaign play even as you're advocating for let's play more one shots i have a a, a numerous long form long running actual plays playing with the same characters <laughs> and the same people like i make I make some of some part of my living doing this. People like it. So like that's yeah. not going away. I don't think we need to be afraid of that going away. People will do that. People will buy campaign play. So if that's not in danger, then yes, let's absolutely steer people towards more one shots. Well, I mean, it's not going to be in danger. Like what you had mentioned about, uh, you know, the Marvel universe or like there's different points of entry, right? And mm -hmm. right now it feels like the the idea of the commitment of a campaign can already is inherently already a barrier to people that are a little more casual right yep um right. or that would be interested in dipping their toe in they've heard of this but they don't really know how it works at all so why put them through the ringer of, of yeah. complicated rules complicated character setup you know and a, and a time commitment with a group that they might not even like and a yep. game they might not even like yeah. only to you know like to feel bad about having to walk yeah and, you know like it, it just it feels like we have opportunities to bring in more people to to play i mean uh yeah. i know that i mentioned this in uh in a previous video about drop in drop out campaigns right by opening that option up to people where i ran a D, &D game but like you could just be like listen you know come in if you don't like it leave it's cool yeah right yeah. because i'm not hinging the story around you and that by giving that freedom of just coming in, trying it out and leaving, I ended up getting 15 people interested in yeah. tabletop RPGs. So to, yeah. to expand my analogy a little bit further, based on what you just said, mm -hmm. there's two different kind of games, right? There's the there's the games which are designed to be one shots or maybe, you know, one or two times. And then there's games that are designed for campaign play, but don't have to be. Right. Right. This would be like this would be like, you know, somebody wants to get into Marvel. They could watch the movies if they just wanted to watch them and be done. Yeah. But if they wanted to get into comics, you can't just say get into comics. Right. You don't just say get into a campaign. You might hand them a graphic novel. Right. Mm -hmm. Which is a mm -hmm. condensed form of that experience. You might say, hey, we're going to run food fight. Right. Yeah. For Shadow Run. We're going to play this contained thing with maybe pre-gen characters, as, as we mentioned earlier get a taste for that right that's not campaign play but neither is it um you know something that has to be a one shot right there's there's so much room in in our field <laughs> for for all of these things right yeah and mm -hmm. if you like kids on bikes that much uh then hack it right and and play yeah. long term right become adults mm -hmm. on bikes uh by the time you're done who cares right yeah. 
<laughs> you can yeah. do what you want. All right. I agree. All right. Good. Good. And that was good talk. What did I say? What did I say? And now, uh, 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 Oz hot took it. <laughs> hot taken. We'll work on. We'll work on that outro. It was hot got taken. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, if you liked our discussion and want to hear more Oz hot takes with a better outro, make sure that you like and subscribe. And thank you for watching. Oh, also, and make sure to check out our Patreon, Patreon.com/slash Shattercasters. Thank you. Thank you.